Let's get directly into this coaching. All right. Um, so, 1K ELO. 1K exactly. Just uh, make sure that I'm slightly more comfortable. It's hard to use the mouse like this. Let me just move a few things. Let's get this set up a little bit better for me. All right, there we go. Yeah, there, there's no way I can play with this setup, but I can definitely do some coaching. So, I'm just going to move the cable a little bit. All right, should be good. Um, okay. Wow, look at this wood line. So, for, first off, he probably plays, like, zoomed out like this. <laughs> and making the houses this far away, you end up laming your own stuff. Uh, who is that? December 19th birthday, brothers. I'm 32 today. Oh, I'm 31. Um, except for my birthday was yesterday. But uh, I didn't ca I didn't play, or I didn't cast enough yesterday. So, this is just a continuation. Um, okay. But, yeah. Usually... I like to have the house just slightly closer, like red. It was a little bit closer. Um, usually, if you build it this far, like five tiles away, you kind of end up laming your stuff. Um, it, it's not the biggest deal, and it didn't end up mattering too much here, but anyways. Um, this is a pretty crazy map, though. Pretty easy walls. It's too bad the gold is out here. Um, but yeah, as the Mongols, you always want to be thinking about going aggressive, and... Um, they're just a great sieve for that because of the hunt bonus. Oh, red going right underneath the TC, but... Oh, no! We killed our own sheep. Disaster. Okay, so, yeah, pro tip. When you ungarrison, don't use the ungarrison button here. Oh, my God, he's killing all your own sheep. Yeah, uh, we definitely don't want to, like, waste that. Um, just bring your own scout back and try and kill his stuff. But, uh, yeah, he was being annoying. But... Of course, the sheep could have been kept down here, a little bit more safe. We wouldn't expect Red to come forward this early with the, the scout, but still, you can always put the sheep in a better position. There was a little bit too much idle time there with the vills as well. So instead of shooting the enemy scout, sometimes just keeping your guys working is going to be better. Instead of shooting the scout, we could have had quite a bit more food just by uh, keeping them working. But you did a lot of damage to a scout. We'll see if that ends up mattering later. Ah! <laughs> Just running around. All right, all right. Uh, I mean, it's still one vill that's idle running around, so I don't think it's really worth it. Oh, especially because we were idling the TC there. So, I mean, I would say you need some single-player practice because we can't be 42 seconds idle TC in Dark Age. Um, yeah, but if you're a newer player, then it definitely is understandable. But that's why single-player practice is going to go a long way. Just practice the Dark Age. Make sure that that's as close to zero as possible. And, um... Because this is basically like two vills down at this point. Which is just a lot. As the Mongols, you should always be ahead in resources collected. Compared to any other Civ. Um, and we're actually behind. So, well, once you drop these, it'll be close. But still, we want to be way further ahead than the opponent. Now, let's just... Put it on this. Oh, we lost the scout to the TC. I didn't even realize because I can't really see the, the gray properly. Gray and gray and the trees look the same. Here, we're going to actually change this to like blue. It's just e easier to see. There we go. Um, Wait, who was that? Thanks to Atomic Saucer. Oh, man. Three, 36 months? Three years? He just happens to be 1K. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's not exactly a newer player. He's been playing for at least a year. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, bringing that in. It's fine. You'll take it in pretty quickly here. Yeah, this this Dark Age was just really rough. Honestly, yeah. The Dark Age is just... You can come back from this, but mm, we just need to get that going. Just ignore your opponent. At this elo, don't even care what your opponent is doing. Just play. try and play a solid yourself. Instead of reacting to what the opponent's doing, just do whatever the strongest option is for your sieve. And if you just execute it decently, you should be able to win. Um, so, yeah. Try to focus on the things that um, matter. Like your own, your own economy management. And um, yeah, even scouting. Honestly, at this level, you can probably auto-scout a lot of the time. And it's going to be fine. Uh, luckily, the opponent's going up super late, so he's not going to be able to really punish too much here, I think. But 
yeah, losing those sheep means that you have to make these farms. So actually, I do like that you're making these farms. Uh, but we don't want to make too many. So you always want to have a plan. It's like if your plan is to go scouts, which it probably should be, then you want to have the barracks and you want to have a uh, stable coming up as soon as you're up. But if we had this many farms, I don't think we're going to have enough for the barracks and the stable. So if you had not made these two farms and gotten the barracks going, then you would have had enough for the barracks and stable and it would have been good. But it just feels like we don't really have any plan. We, we have zero plans here. And that's why this is going to potentially fail. So the reason we want to make military is to attack the opponent early so that they don't just um, play really greedy and, for example, wall up and then go up to the fast castle. Oh, and, well, we shift queued wrong here. Um, yeah, just a few mechanical things. Like, when you were placing the farms, you had all of the villagers sort of, uh, well, one of them was, was, um, sent properly, but you basically shift queued these, and then your villagers all built this one, and then built this one, and then this one, and then this one. It's just a slow way to do it. You want to have your villagers split, so you want to place them all, and then right-click once on one of the farms. Yeah, you did split it here, but, um... You could have just right-clicked this farm, and then they would, after they all build this one, then they'll distribute themselves evenly um, to the other ones. So you don't need to actually manually task them to each individual one, but you just build the first one all with one vill, and then they'll they'll run to the other ones um, on their own. Uh, so let's go back here. Yeah, definitely just a shift queuing problem here. And, well, barracks is going to be late. You're rushing it up, but you don't have the wood because we spent too much here. So... Um, yeah, each villager collects around 50 wood on the way to the next age. So you can sort of estimate how much you're gonna, wood you're going to have once you reach up. So if you have, for example, 5 on wood, you're going to have more than that. But 5 on wood is going to give you 250 wood by the time you reach the feudal age. If you have 5 on wood throughout all of the dark age transition to feudal age. So that's 130 seconds. 50 wood from each, 250 wood. So it's really easy to... Make a little quick calculation or a quick estimation of how much wood you're going to have on the next age. It's very useful. Um, the farm layout is perfect. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> um, okay. Making a house here. One other thing that I, I always say is wall the front first and then wall the back later. Because, well, the opponent's going to attack from the front. So let's wall the front first and then worry about this later. Um, we're going to go for a range. Wait, yesterday I had a Mongols guy go for a range as well. Just play scouts. Just just do the thing that's good for your Civ, right? Why are we playing range? I mean, yeah, you're worried about the opponent making Japanese spears and stuff. But you play scouts to start and then you go range after. But I think at this ELO, defensive skirmishers is, is just kind of fine, I guess. But you need to be walled, though. I think if you're going to play like this with no aggression, you need to be full walled earlier. Because if the opponent made literally anything, he would come in and kill you here. Um, as Japanese, he could have made men-at-arms. Imagine he gets three men-at-arms in the base. If he doesn't run into the TC, those are going to wreak a lot of havoc. Um, I'm making a build order for sort of this ELO that's really easy to follow. And... Yeah, I want to get the, the script actually written later today. Or, sorry, the script is written. I want to get it voice recorded and maybe start on the video editing soon. Because I think it's going to really help a lot of players at this level. And it's basically just full wall into defensive skirmishers if you need them. And don't even worry about going aggressive in Feudal Age. Because obviously there's a lot of, that we can work on just by doing eco management. So not even worried about worrying about what the opponent's doing. Make sure that you get your walls up. If he has ranged units, you just make skirmishers behind the walls. It's going to be pretty simple. And I think this kind of gameplay should be pretty strong on this elo. But I mean yeah, we did we get wheel yeah, we're getting wheelbarrow too early. Generally you want to get wheelbarrow at around 15 farms. So we're only on 7 farms. We're going to get way too early. So the opponent is actually over 10 villagers ahead right now. And that's kind of crazy. I'm not sure how that happened, but I guess we have town watch yeah. No, we don't have town watch. You only have a minute idle. I, I really have... Oh, wait. It's because he's not even feudal age. That's why. Okay, yeah. Um. So, opponent's going to have just a lot more res to work with here. Oh, what a horrible time for him to delete his walls. He was going to place a building there. 
Oh, no, as he says, what a horrible time to delete the walls. Okay, well, I mean, this was good. He's gonna, he's still gonna rush it up because, well, your archers just, they're not gonna do too much. There's only three of them and he, he knows how important it is to get these up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, unfortunately not able to actually get any um, considerable damage done here. But guess what? Y you don't have to attack here. We can attack any any other side. We can go over here. We can go over here. We don't have to be chilling here. So that's another thing that I see a lot of lower level players do. Even, even like 1300, 1400, they just only attack the front. It's like the back of the base doesn't exist for them. They just attack the front. So, you know, just go around the side. It's not, it's not too bad. Um, like again, don't, we don't need to be just shooting these. I guess shooting the farms is kind of good, but chill behind a wood line. It's good. Imagine you went here, right? On the gold. There's usually a better place to go that's not just hanging here. But of course, we don't have scouting, so it's a little hard to make that call. Although you know, do know this is here, but you don't know how the walls are here. But just sending a single unit to just check the walls is going to go a long way. Because obviously going here and denying his gold is a lot more important than just running back and forth with your units. So that's uh, one thing you can do to get get a little bit more damage is think a little bit about how your opponent's base is laid out and where you're going to send your units. Okay. <laughs> Just reading the chat real quick because I don't have it up on a second monitor. Um, okay. We're up to Castle Age. And actually faster than the opponent somehow. So that is good. But again, two minutes idle TC. We need to fix that. Before we do anything, before we think about strategy or like anything, we need to not idle the TC for two minutes. And that's just mechanical skill. We just need to have select all TCs button and spam villagers. Because um, nothing else matters other than not own the TC at this point, because that, that's like just so many resources that you're not getting in. Um, so, yeah, practicing a little bit in single player is going to go a long way. Okay. So, forcing a tower is really good. He, he definitely didn't need this tower. This is, this is a bad tower. Because now you just go down here, and then you just win, right? <laughs> well, may not win, but we have a uh, raid from Pride Gaming 96. Welcome. Um... All right, so we're up, and we're going to go crossbow. Like, crossbow is Mongols? Man, imagine imagine if you were just going full step lancer here. You get a few step lancers going, the, the enemy dies. But the crossbow, they need to be in position to actually do something. And we don't have Bodkin Arrow coming in, so... Yeah, we need to have crossbow and Bodkin at the exact same time. If you don't get them at the exact same time, it's going to do zero. Because you're still only doing one damage per hit until you get Bodkin. It's really when you have both upgrades that you do two damage per hit. On the Palisades, and you get in. Um, you're going to... I mean, just... You need to be camping something. So this is just a lack of scouting. If you were here, the opponent just dies. He has no access to gold. But it's like... You're just too dead set on going through this way. And it's not going to happen. Okay, looking at home. We're adding a stable. Okay, okay. Um, it would have been nice to have that up on Castle Age. But I think you should be adding TCs here. I think if you just go for two TCs, start booming, it's going to go... It's going to make the game a lot better. Japanese actually should be struggling a little bit against Mongols. Because, yeah, they have Arb, which is pretty good. But, um... Yeah, uh, like Mongols late game is just better. With the better Hussars. And if you can get the Mangadai as well, it's pretty strong. Um, what Japanese could be doing here is, like, crossbow and pike, which would be a little harder to deal with. But, I mean, mangonels can deal with that. At this elo, it's kind of hard to predict, though. It depends on how good the micro is. There we go. We finally found this, but it, it's kind of too late. The opponent already has a bajillion knights, which he was able to produce because he had gold income for a long time. Okay. So. Yeah. Um... We've got... Where is his knights, actually? He's, oh, he he is going to do the huge surround here. You're going to get in, and you're going to kill one. Okay. It's good. It's a start. Oh, one more. There we go. And now you see the knights, and it's like, oh, dang. Well, he doesn't have plus two, though. 
Yeah, take the hill. Oh, if you go into here, imagine you went into this corner here. You could actually win this fight. That's how crazy these uh, guys are. But yeah, he doesn't have plus two, so you're actually going to get a few. Three. If you can get one more, that would be pretty good. Okay, I mean, stop microing. You don't need to micro. I, I think you should have stopped microing like a long time ago and done something else. But yeah, when you are when you know you're going to lose a fight, you just let your guys auto attack for a little while and then do something else. Okay, you definitely don't want to be making knights, so... He's got a bunch of knights, and you have basically zero knights. So if you're making knights and he's making knights, he's always going to have more knights than you. And, well, when you're making knights and he's making knights and he has more, he's going to win the fight, right? So we need something else. You're going to go double monastery, but, I mean, camels are fine too, though. But, well, we don't have upgrades. That's the thing. Like, if you open crossbow, you have to get damage with the crossbow. And at this elo, I don't see people getting enough damage with the crossbow anyways. So the crossbow opening is probably not really worth it. Honestly, just spamming cavalry is always, always good. But yeah, step lancers with the sieve is is what you really want to be going for in the mid game. Um, okay, opponent's actually going to lose one, but losing a knight and a camel there. Just need to get your army together. Um, could it make monks? So it'll save you, though. So it's pretty good. Stop making knights once I saw he had more. Or had so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monks and camels. We don't need two counters to the same thing, though. Um, you could have just stayed on Crossbowman, I guess. Like, Mongols, they still have Arb. So, you can go Arb as an opening. Okay, nice couple conversions. That's really good. You already have upgrades for the, the Crossbowman, right? So, Camels, I don't know. You don't have any upgrades for them. So, it just feels like Monks and, and Crossbowman would have been fine. Because Camels are still pretty expensive. And... It feels like you want to go for Mangadai. So, making a bunch of camels, I don't know. It, it's just going to delay going up. It's going to delay a lot of things. So, I think it's just maybe unnecessary if you're just going to defend with the monks anyways. Um, but, well, I think a third TC at some point, too. I think on Castle Age, you should have had a third TC as well. For sure. Both players. Um, okay, both players going for both saw at the same time. That's funny. I... I it's kind of weird that you went heavy plow earlier. What would have been better would have been bow saw once you're up and then heavy plow later. Bow saw, it just, it pays off pretty quickly because it increases your efficiency right away. Whereas heavy plow pays off later because it increases the number, amount of food in the farms. So I guess if you're reseeding a bunch of farms, it's okay. But yeah, um, I would say that you're going to benefit a lot from just playing this as like a Sim City simulator. Like you just... You just need to work on the base building aspect because, well, we're floating all this wood, right? So no matter what we're doing with the army, it doesn't even matter. Um, because what you should be doing is making a bunch of farms. And yeah, you can just make a bunch of farms, keep the villagers pumping, make the castle here, start making Magadai, and then attack later. If you go and attack now, we have like five guys. They're going to die to anything. And it's like all of our attention is going into this. Oh, the murder holes. Bit of a bit of a waste of resources. It's kind of pointless right now. But um, yeah, I think just fo focusing on the base building aspect of the game is probably a lot more important than trying to do all this fancy stuff like going forward with villagers and having the military here. Um, I think, uh, yeah, one of the main things that you want to do is spend the wood throughout the game. So that that's kind of the fundamental economy management thing that you have to do is just look at the wood count. If you have wood, spend it on something. So at this point, we really need more farms. We want to be on like 30, 40 farms. We have 12 farms. So a bunch of farms here, a bunch of farms here. Um, yeah. And where's your castle? Oh, you're going to buy it, I guess? You need the... Wait, you, you don't have a market though. Oh, disaster. We're here for the castle, but... We don't have... Wh where are we going? We're going to do an internal castle back in the back of his base. That's a little crazy. Um, oh, yeah. Castle... Yeah, murder holes also cost stone. So, yeah, that's a problem. Really a lot from this? Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate it. That's good. Um, fourth TC now. Okay. But the main thing is you're not spending the, the wood properly. So, spending the wood... It's so important. Um, 
Because the reason you don't have food is because you're not spending the wood on farms. And, yeah. <laughs> this castle's kind of uh, creative, I must say. <laughs> Does he see it? He doesn't even see it. What? Um, you know, the normal thing to do with the castle is to either place it at home. At home as Mongols makes sense if you want to make Mangadai because you don't want your castles to die so that you don't want them forward. Um, but if you're going to go for a forward castle like here, ranges the TC, controls the front, you can take his stone. Here is like, okay, maybe he's not going to see it, but you kill a few vills, he might garrison. He's going to be surprised. But also, this castle's back here. All he needs to do is just ignore it and just play down here then. Yeah, it controls this gold, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, okay. Knights in my base at the back. Yeah, they, they did keep getting in. Uh, but you had monks at home, so if you have monks at home, you should be able to just defend anything. You keep a few dudes back, and then the knights can't do anything. And we got two kills, but... Oh, three kills. I mean, three villager kills for a castle, though, is not really great. Yeah, it controls this, but mm, it's not really that useful. And so the problem is that the opponent made a lot more farms. He has 33 farms. You have 16. And so, he is going to go up to Imperial Age, and you're floating 3k wood. So instead of floating 3k wood, we could have had enough to go up to Imperial Age a while ago, and then we'd be trebbing stuff down. So, yeah, I, I think just you really need to focus on the eco-management side. And that's that's the really the main the main thing. Like you don't have to worry about strategy or anything at this point. Just eco management. Play your own game, and spend that wood. That's that's really all I have to say here. Um, do some single player practice. Don't even need an AI set. Just single player practice, and and work on the dark age. Once the dark age has no idle time, then work on the feudal age. In feudal age. What you want to be doing is just spending um, spending on a farm. Every 60 wood, you get a farm. That's basically the key. This is uh, this is a little bit crazy. Elite Mangadai for zero Mangadai and zero castles. Like we, we don't want to just get upgrades for units that we don't have. If you're going to get an upgrade, it's because you want to upgrade the units that you have already. If we get an upgrade that we don't even have units for, then um, yeah, it's kind of pointless. I think the Mangadai upgrade got cancelled because the castle died, though. But this is what I'm saying. If you want to go Mangadai, you don't want to place your castles forward. Um, He's got Samurai. That's so crazy. Cavalier. Mongols is not really great at doing Cavalier, but yeah. I mean, the opponent's eco should have been better, but looking at the resources collected, somehow you're actually way ahead. So, okay. You actually still might win this because this is 1k elo, and just a bunch of knights can do magic. Although, sending a single trap up here, maybe, maybe not the play, but this could be good. Now, the thing is, like, Mongol Cavalier is so garbage because you don't have the final armor, so your dudes just die. And going for a, a TC is basically just not a good play, especially if he has a castle. Generally, you don't want to go for the TC. Generally, if the Vill's garrison, you just go to a different TC and try and vil kill Vill's over there. Uh, well, your eco is still good with 140 Vill's. You just need some counter to his infantry. And, well, hey, you do have Mangadai. Okay. As I said, your composition is better. If you can get more Mangadai going, you will have the better units. The one villager castle on the front, though. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Here we go. Yeah, a bajillion food. All you need to do is spend it at this point. It's just spamming, spamming hussars. Wait, where did your stables go? Wait, didn't you have a bunch of stables back here? What happened? Did you delete them? Oh my god, we shift deleted all of our stables. Oh, disgusting. Why did we do that? That was a mistake. Accident. Accidents happen. <laughs> um, well, we're going to need to replace those. I would say just place like 10, 15, 20 stables. Oh, you're placing them over here. All right. Um, this is a big ball of bang at Ido. I don't think Japanese can deal with this. Especially if you get a Hussar Meat Shield going. Yeah. Um, you need the armor. 
still. We're still lacking the armor, but I maybe you have thumb ring. I'm not sure if you have thumb ring. Maybe. I have no clue. It doesn't really say. So, if you don't have thumb ring, you need thumb ring. But yeah, you do have Parthian tactics. Yeah. Um, just need a Hussar meat shield. You need like four trebs. Okay, when you're pushing with siege, three or four trebs, and then go. Don't go with one treb. At this point, you need to have all of your army fighting this entire time. And the castle is going down so slowly. Okay. But see, the castle doesn't even go down. If we had two, even two traps there, the castle goes down. With one trap, it's not going to happen. Again, like one trap. At least you have, do have siege engineers. There's the second one. With two, maybe. I would love to see uh, Hussar, but look, like, that's a big queue of Light Cav. I would love to see Hussar upgrade. Other than that, it's over. I'm pretty sure you'll just, you'll just out flood. And, oh wait, you are a little low on bills now though. Another, another thing, like, again, what I was saying earlier, lower level players just, it, it feels like they don't realize the back of the opponent's base exists and they just always attack the front. Just raiding with a few guys here. Like imagine, okay, imagine you send some Hussar up here, all these die. You send a few Hussars. Well, this side's pretty well defended. You can't really do anything over here, but I mean, getting a few Hussars to the back, the game is over. You send like 40 Hussars back here, half his bills are gone. The game is ended. But we're just constantly sending guys in the front. And uh, well, I must say that Light Cav, not very cost effective against Japanese helps. So eventually, he will outspam units. All right, here we go. Now Hussar's in. But the only thing you're lacking here is siege. You just need siege, even rams, even like drill siege rams with a super fast speed, gonna be good. And here we go, now we're in the back. Nice, all right, well game is, game is so done, actually. You should just win. I think he's just seeing the score, and he's like, I still got this. But, um, nah. We can see that. Look, look, look. You got that one raid in, and suddenly the opponent is completely toast. So, it just shows the importance of late game raiding. Don't just attack the front. When you're going Hussars, don't just attack the front. Like, go to the back. I mean, the Hus like, look, the Hussars all just die if they go here. But, well, the opponent's economy is kind of already dead, so... There's not really a lot of places to raid anymore. Um, half his bills are just idle, so... Yeah, GG. Alright, hopefully... You gained some knowledge here. Um, yeah, in the end. Opponent is actually so fast. 34 is not bad for this, this level. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, we do need to manage the eco a bit more. That's where you were really struggling, so... Yeah. That's, I think that's where you need to focus, is... Um, eco management in the early game is gonna go a long way. Because you obviously have an idea for how to play. It's just just the the mechanics in the early game